Hello and welcome to uh, the showing of a uh, video about freelance offense and uh, some people have different names for it but we'll go through it uh, and try to explain why we call ours the way we do and you'll see that in the, in the film. Our freelance offense is mainly uh, used for three things. Number one, at the end of a fast break, if you are unable to get the shot you want, instead of bringing the ball out and running a play or that sort of thing, we continue the attack by the fast break ends and then freelance offense begins. And but truthfully, uh, <coughs> excuse me, truthfully, uh, we get most of our points off of that transition. Okay, uh, very little off the fast break. And this is true of all teams, not just uh, this particular uh, team. Uh, but that's one of the things that we use freelance offense for. The other thing is when a play breaks down. Now we have a, a plays that we run also, but <laughs> any time that it breaks down, Excuse me, I got a dry voice. Uh, we go right into freelance. The freelance offense we use does not require a setup. It just, we can start it any place. We could start it with a pass uh, from the timeline and in. Uh, once they know the rules, then uh, it fits all situations. The third situation is, regardless of how well you do your offense, you're going to have times when uh, nothing is run. The fast break, there's no play. Uh, you just kind of get out of a kilter and, uh, and you, you're doing things without any play or without a fast break, but you are freelancing. We use it for that purpose and players recognize it when they've gotten good at it, that we're not set up, we're not, it's, it's none of our situations, but we still uh, uh, attack quickly uh, with our freelance. However, our freelance can be run as a play. And when we do that, and then and we use the same thing to teach them the freelance offense, is we set up in a two-guard front, a high post, and two wingmen. And we start there, if we're running it as a play, by passing to the wing and cutting through. Uh, there is nothing else after that cut goes through, and you'll see it in the, in the film, uh, we go right into of freelance offense. What we show you today is a, actually from a, a video made in 2017. It just happens to be a very good video uh, for showing how to uh, start teaching uh, the freelance offense. I would recommend that you stay on to the end and watch that because the corrections made there and the directions made uh, are really what you should be doing and what you should know. It's a very good learning experience for you. Freelance offense is very effective, but it is not easy to coach unless you are willing to allow freedom. Uh, you can't make up plays for them. Uh, you got to let them do what they want. And we talk about that in this film and show it uh, with players. 
uh, I should should mention that the players that we're using in this film are college players, but not of a, of a team. They're just college players that we we got together for this particular film and and more more uh, filming. Um, so you, you have to remember they they have never seen this before when you you watch watch me introduce it to them. I had never seen uh, the players. I mean, I saw them, but I never worked with them. This is the first day of practice with this team. So you will see how that you you have to walk through things, and uh, there's a lot of correction at this time not necessary after you've been working with them for three or four days. Um, but you'll get the corrections and you will get some information that will help you to be able to go right into uh, the, uh, uh, to, to getting them started and getting them started right. Even though I'm not saying I say the greatest things or anything in this film. I'm just saying that uh, this is how uh, it, it can be done. This is how we do it, and it's been very effective for us. So I'd, I'd, if I were you, I'd watch it all the way through. You can't get, gain that much by three, four minutes in the beginning. Uh, the film will probably be a little longer than normal, uh, but it's all worth it uh, if you want to run freelance offense and I recommend that you are able to run freelance offense after a fast break, after a play breaks down and when nothing else is, is working or going on. Uh, so I would go through it completely and maybe a few times. Then you will learn and you will get a feeling for the words and the uh, in the way that we approach it. We approach it without, we have rules. We do not hand out the rules and we show them we, as things happen in our practice. Uh, and you'll see that happen in this film. So sit back and just watch. I think you'll learn a lot about a part of basketball that is there whether you want to do it or not. Uh, a, a tremendous amount of time on, in a game is spent in players doing it on their own. Whether you, you want to do it or not, it's up to them. So we'll get started now and you'll see them on the floor. Thank you. You can stay there. You can stay there. But uh, you're, you're talking to each other. Talk to, uh, listen to me because I got something to tell you. The minute that they get done, I want the point guard, this guy right here, to have a ball. If you have to take it away from somebody, you have the ball, okay? And so the minute that they're done, you get your team out here, okay? And you have the ball when you're off the floor, okay? Because I want you getting on the floor in a hurry. We are gonna, we're going to teach you the monk offense. Does anybody have any idea why I call it the monk offense? Huh? Patience? Patience. Patience. No. I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's a man. Named after a man. Huh? Who? What did he say? Say it again. Well, he's, I, I suppose he's a monk, but he's not the monk I'm talking about. Huh? <laughs> what? T you don't know. Okay, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow night I'm going to bring a $20 bill here. And if you can tell me why I na who I named this offense after. And if you will read a little bit about the man, you'll understand why I named it after him. Now, you got, you got the internet, you got all kinds of things. You should be able to find out somebody named Monk. Okay? All right. 
All right, two guard front, two guard front, two wings, high post. Nathan, you take the high post. Where's the other guard? Okay. Monk offense is a freelance offense. It has rules. I never hand out the rules. I teach you the rules. I want you to learn it not from memorization, but I want you to learn it from how the game uh, is played. Okay, so I, I'll, there's, I, there's ten, 10 rules. Uh, the rules are only there to keep us together as a team. But in actuality, you can do what you want to do. You make up your offense. But you make it up as a team. And the, the rules, when I give them all to you, will make you do that. You will, this is, because there are certain things you can't do, there are certain things you must do, there are certain things you can do, uh, and that, that combination of things, and then when we start drilling and showing you how the different, uh, uh, different ways you can create your own offense uh, within the team, uh, then we, ha we, we get pretty good. Uh, and when you get good at this, uh, it's the most effective offense that, that we, you can run. And the other thing, we can run it after fast break. We don't, you see, we don't need positions. We can start it anywhere. We, if the play breaks down, we're going to, have, we're going to teach you, start teaching you a play or two or three on Wednesday. If that play breaks down, we don't stop. We go right into Monk. Uh, it's our our uh, uh, fallback, I guess you could call it. Uh, but in the end of the night, we will score more points doing that than we will on plays. Uh, even though we're going to run plays good, too. Uh, but uh, we start on a... I'm going to teach it to you in the, in the half court because it's a good place to teach you. Coaches, you'll see it in the book... Uh, I tell you, start teaching it here. It's, it, it, you have better control. We always start monk with a pass to the wing and a cut as hard as you can away from the ball. At that point, you can do whatever you want to do. There's no more positions. You are in control. I'm sitting on the sideline hoping that you, can, you do a good job, but I can't do it. I can't control you. And this is what scares the shit out of most coaches. They want to control everything, you know? So uh, it, uh, it, it takes, some, takes some courage to, to play like this and have faith in your players. Uh, but if you work w w with them well, now, that's, that's the, always start like that. After the end of fact, always start. Pass the wing cut. And that cut has got to be a good cut. You don't, have to, you don't have to try to run it off a screen. Just get through there and you look at him because a heck of a lot of times he's going to be open right down there. Because most defenders start tailing him about here. And you can throw right, right over him. High post man, who's ever the high post man, when the ball's out in front, get it out there. Who, where'd that guy go? Come on. Come on back. Okay. Give him the ball. We always want the high post man. I guess we don't have a pro thing here. We always want the high post man on the side of the ball at the elbow. Okay, pass over there. Now you've got to be over here. You'll see why in a little, when we get going. But for now, that's, now once he passes and cuts then you don't have to worry about that. You can do whatever you want. All right, now, get it back here. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. Go ahead and keep it over there. Here's a rule. When you're away from the ball, you should screen for somebody or cut to a position. I don't care where. Okay? Let's say you passed and you got a guard up here. What could you do? I'm just going to get the, the well, stay right there. I, I'm, when I say these things, I'm not saying you have to do them. I'm saying here's some possibilities to get you started. 
Okay, here, what, what could he do? He no, could cut, cut, that's a cut. Okay, come back here. Could go screen, screen, that's a screen, that's a cut. You see what I'm talking about? You could go up, set a back screen there, you cut, cut off. This is the things you, I mean, so away from the ball, you're looking to cut or to screen for somebody. Now, if you want to be a good team guy, you screen. Uh, and here's something else to remember. More points are scored on cutting than any other uh, mechanism in offense. It's not the screen at the ball. Uh, it's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's cutting. The reason the tr Lakers were so good with the triangle, which is a very simple offense, and Utah, the two greatest offenses in the history, last generation at least, were those two offenses. And they, they relied on the cut. Uh, and they got, and they, and you know, Jackson won 11 NBA championships with a, a tinker toy offense. Uh, but his players knew how to cut. And uh, Jerry Sloan out there spent 20, 22 years running the same place. And, uh, uh, but they were, they cut to the basket, they cut to the ball, they cut to, see, you can cut to the post up. Cut to the elbow. Uh, you got all kinds of options here. You got to figure it out, though. Okay, bring it back. Okay, pass and cut. Pass and cut. Here's the next rule. When you get the ball, first thing you look for is shot. Now, take the shot if it's a bad shot or isn't a good shot for you. Uh, that's the first thing you look. Second, you look for drives. Third, you look to pass, okay? Everybody that catches the ball should go one, two, three before he passes, unless the guy's open for, you know, a great shot, okay? And you should be looking there, not back there. Look down there. But if you start doing this, catching, passing, he catches and passes. All you're doing is passing. And guys are breaking open down here and you can't see them because you're so busy throwing it around the outside. So three counts. One, two, three. Then, if you got nothing else, then you can go ahead and throw it, uh, a non-penetrating uh, pass. That's the, la that's the next rule. Okay, the last rule, four. Rule four. That's all you got to remember tonight. But as you do things in here, you will learn other rules because I'll bring them up. The last rule is there's two things you can't do. And, and I'm going to just give you one of them. You cannot screen at the ball. Because when you screen at the ball, it's a two-man play. And we're a five-man team. Uh, so we don't do that, OK? I've lived a long time in this business without running a screen at the ball. Because a long time ago, when I was at West Texas State, I had two assistants. We worked very, very hard. They worked hard. I worked hard. Every summer, we said we had to, we had to get better at something. So one summer, we said we're going to analyze every screen at the ball, every screen down, every screen away, which is the most effective at the end of the season. We spent the whole summer doing that. What we found is that the least effective was the screen at the ball. That was the least effective. I know you see it 60 times a night, but it still isn't effective. Uh, if you watch, once in a while they get a shot off it, once in a while they get a drive off of it, but most of the time they have to pass two or three times and they're not into play anymore. Uh, I'm not against it. It's just that it dominates. If I let you screen at the ball, every time the guy gets the ball, we're going to set a screen. We're playing a two-man play. Three men are standing or watching because nothing else they can do. I want movement. San Antonio last, what's the day today? Monday? Yesterday they played. 
they just killed Memphis with motion when you get going like that. Uh, I, just, I just don't think they're very effective with it. So why do it? Okay, those are the rules you got tonight. Now, let's try it. What do you say? Okay, come back here. Come back here. There. All right. Now, you tell me. I couldn't draw up a better play than that. That was a great play. It was like a, a double pick. It was Christ. That would be drive me crazy defensively. Uh, it was great. And you know something else? I'll tell you something else. Hold it up. You'll never see it again. That's the truth. You'll never see it again. That's, that's the beauty of what we do. Uh, you only see it once. Uh, that's all you need, just once. Because we, we have so damn many things we can do. You don't need it. You don't need, I mean, just good common sense things. And you're getting great shots. That was, I'm, I am really kind of a, uh, I get very enthusiastic about beauty in basketball. And that was beautiful, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, that was fun to watch. Okay, go ahead. Don't hurry, don't hurry, look, look. There we go, that's good. Okay, you know, just a single cut like that guy made. All right, now right now, it's, it, you're thinking about it, but you won't after a while. Come on, get the ball. Oh, you got it? Good job, boy. Good job, point guard. Here you go. Who we got over there? Here we go. Oh, no, no, no. He's got a pass to you. Nothing starts, but if that happens... If that happens, and I'll tell you why. Later, it'll show you why it happened. It may have been a backdoor cut, okay? Then let him start. Okay. Okay? okay. Nothing. Guard to guard passes are nice in this offense. Mm -hmm. Overplay, don't sit there and beg for it. Just get it over there and let him go. You know? Okay. What do we got? What do we got? Hold it. Three counts. Three counts, unless, there it is. That's all there is to it. Okay, white, let's go. Here we go, I'll start you. Because I don't want to start, I don't want to be right-handed. Okay, remember, you can always go guard to guard to get it in. Here we go. There, okay, okay, that was easy. Black, I started. I started. Hold the ball for three counts. Okay. There it is. Okay, there, you can get the, you can break into the post, but I saw one guy. I'm not sure who it was. Uh, go to the post and then run right out of it. Uh, that's another rule. When you post up, you can post up for three counts. I don't care who posts up. Anybody can post up. Three counts and then get out of there. Okay? What can you do? Three counts. I can go set a screen away. Very good. It's very good. Or I can come up here to screen. Nobody's up there. I can play the high post for a while. Uh, we love having a man at the high post. Okay. Here we, here we go. Three counts. Three counts. Look in there. Eric. Look in there. That guy broke in open. Okay? It's very critical in this offense. When you run a play, you know where to look. Okay? 
you know what's going to come open. But I'm going to tell you something. My dad told me, you can't learn anything when you're talking. Okay, you came here to learn, I hope. Then I'm, I'm for two hours, I'm the guy who gets to talk, okay? Uh, now I lost my train of talk. See what you guys did to me? Uh, I'll think about it. Go ahead. One, two, three. One. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't throw away from a layup. Never throw away from a layup. It's what wins games. I got it. No, okay, here we go. Here we go. That's it. Good, 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 good. good. Three counts. Very good. No, yeah, don't be afraid to take a shot when it's a good shot. Okay, block. Good, good. You see, that was, that's all there is to it. Uh, that first cut, you know what that first cut does? It makes the defense uh, adjust. And when they adjust, they are then uh, in scramble. And when they're in scramble, they can't defend really well, okay? Because they don't know where their man is. Everything gets kind of goofy for them. Uh, that first cut, if it's a good cut, makes them adjust. You just watch it. They will adjust. And then their next cut and your next cut, you get them, okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to change. Now, uh, what I'm going to do next is the next few things I'm going to try to show you some ways, break down a little bit and show you some ways that you can uh, utilize uh, these things in, in uh, the offense. I want to start with, um, I want to start with a line up here and a line over there. 